My family was saying, Dad, what do you want for Christmas? And I didn't really need anything other than them. And I just kept saying, you guys is, is my blessing. I just, that's the greatest gift you can give me is family. And uh, just, just so excited when we're able to give. But I was real joyous giving them, giving them presents. Amen? The year's not over yet, right? We got a few more days left. What, what's the date here? 27, so math, four more days, <laughs> three and a half days, exactly. Oh, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm bittersweet on the ending of this year. I, I've had a great time this year. It's been amazing. And at the same time, I'm looking forward to the destiny of 2016. Amen. And some things that maybe weren't quite as pleasant this year, I'm so thankful that we can leave them behind and move forward. Amen? I believe that we as a ministry are stepping forward, uh, discovering new areas that God wants us as a ministry. I know we're shy on people today. It's Christmas season. Lots are traveling. I understand that. And sometimes, believe it or not, sometimes snow scares people away in our beautiful Fraser Valley. It might just be because everyone drives summer tires and does not have a clue how to drive in the weather. But anyways, besides the point, what? Oh, Chris, the Ohio boy is saying, come on, I'm an Ohio boy. Some of us know how to drive in snow, but how many of you have seen bad weather and watched some drivers and you just shake your head, go, oh my. And then when you find them in the ditch a little farther up the road, I'm sure you all stop to help. You probably go, toot, 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 you know. <laughs> Roll the window down and say, bad place to park. I'm just kidding. Don't do that. A friend of mine, a friend of mine, back in Bible school, we were riding our motorcycles to, uh, to Bible school in the morning, and uh, I don't know what he was doing, but he always wanted to beat me, and he had one of these uh, V-twin sabers or something like that, like a 750cc, and I have a Z1R900 Kawasaki uh, souped up, engineer racing header and all the stuff, and he's not going to beat me. He tried every single time. It's an impossibility he's ever going to beat me unless mine quits. But anyways, that's besides the point. Sorry. <laughs> a little bit of a rabbit trail there, but that's okay. We'll get back on track. So we're just about at Bible school in the morning, and uh, he gives it, and it's kind of a wet day. He's beside me, slightly behind me, and we're just driving. Like, maybe the speed limit may be slightly over. Lord, forgive me. And um, he gives it and cuts in front of me. And at the same time, is like heavy on the brakes because we have to turn. It's wet, and he hits a manhole cover. And all of a sudden, all I see is sparks and plastic flying by, and he's sliding along the pavement. Wasn't going very fast, probably 50 or 60K. And I'm thinking, what on earth? So anyways, I stopped behind him to block the traffic. And we're on Southeast Marine Drive. At that time, Northwest Baptist Theological College and Seminary, where I went, was actually on, on Marine Drive. And uh, I'm helping him pull, see if he's OK. And then we're helping him pull his motorcycle up. And some guy drives by, rolls down his window in the right lane, and yells, good place to park. I'm like, guys, and of course I didn't take my helmet and swing it or anything like that, so, just kidding. <laughs> oh, some of you that are visiting are going to leave, say, I'm never coming back to this, you hear that preacher? Anyways, <laughs> let's look at Exodus chapter 12, verse 1, and I did not swing my helmet at him. Exodus 12, verse 1. Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be your beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. So here God is about to deliver the Israelites from 430 years of Egyptian bondage. 430 years the Egyptians have been in bondage, in slavery in Egypt. This verse is the eve of their departure for the long, from their long enslavement. So this verse that's, that it's speaking about is actually the eve uh, before they actually leave Egypt. God used Moses in instituting a new year and a new era in the Israelites. 
He also instituted the sacred calendar so that Israel and the world can know his prophetic, God's prophetic plan for the future. For Israel, this is a new beginning. This is a new beginning to, to literally leave their bondage, leave their captivity behind. It's a new beginning for them, and it's the beginning of a new season for them. It's a fresh start as a freed and redeemed people instead of 430 years of slavery. They are on the threshold of stepping over into destiny and purpose with God. Because while they were slaves, uh, they lost their destiny. They lost their purpose. All they saw was slavery and how Pharaoh after Pharaoh after Pharaoh was beating them up by the laws of the Egyptian rule. And it was destroying them. But God orchestrated this movement with a great demonstration of his power. It was a great demonstration of God's power. Ten plagues hit Egypt. This is the last plague to hit them. This is the last night of plagues that was going to come upon them. Because Israelites were about to step over into something fresh and new. 2016 is prophesied to be the year of destiny. Many prophets are saying that we are stepping into the year of destiny. And I feel like so many people get held captive in their Egypt, in their season of Egypt, in their season of captivity, and start to feel like slaves in captivity. But that's not what God released his people to do. That is not why this 10th plague was given to them because they were to be freed from the captivity. And I believe that this year, the ending of 2015, stepping into 2016, can be something new. It can be a brand new experience if we choose to step into the newness of what the new year brings. At the beginning of the new year, many people set goals. They set resolutions called New Year's resolution. Who's ever set a New Year's resolution? How many set a New Year's resolution last year? Now, don't show me hands, but how many did not happen yet? We're probably going to start a mass exodus of weight loss and eating healthy or something, right? Because that's usually the average New Year's resolution. Some people, this time of the year, as Christmas rolls around, the New Year's resolution hasn't happened. They start getting depressed and frustrated. And, and you know what? Let's make New Year's resolutions about his kingdom and his glory in our lives. Let's forget all the other stuff that we know we're probably not going to successfully accomplish anyways, unless you have an incredibly good free will that has strength in it, and your choices become wise. But, but with Christ and with God in us, we can do New Year's resolutions, and I want to claim the first one. We're stepping into a year of destiny. We're stepping into a year of destiny. And I am going to, in my life, because I'm the only one that has control in my life, I can't control anyone else's, but I can control mine. I am going to step into destiny. Prophetic words that have been given to me personally over the years. And if I step in, the ministry starts stepping in to greater levels and understandings. I'm looking, not that what we're doing is, is bad. No, what actually this year has been amazing for this ministry. But we're going to look into the greater things of what God can give us. The things that he has already planned for each one of us. The things that he has already dreamt about before the foundations of the earth were laid. The aspects of his grace, his glory, his power and authority that he has so destined for each one of us as believing in Christ Jesus as our Lord and Savior, I'm going to step into it in my life into greater measure and greater levels. Amen? And I hope some of you come along. If you don't, I'll do it on my own and I'll, I'll be happy and I'll be lonely without all you. But I'm sure you guys are coming along. Amen? The year's not over yet. We have three and a half days to fulfill the destiny of 2015. So we can step into the greater destiny of 2016. Amen? David cried out in Psalms 23, verse 5 and 6. Psalms chapter 23, starting in verse 5. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Anyone have enemies? Don't put your hands up. You have prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Boy, does that aggravate enemies. Imagine if your enemies are all around you, and in the middle of all your enemies, you're sitting down at a table eating. 
It would probably freak them out so much they wouldn't touch you because you have no fear. And here the Lord is saying, don't be fearful. In the presence of your enemies, I have prepared a table for you. In the presence of accusations, false accusations, I have prepared a table for you where you can have abundant peace, where you can have me who's your protector around you, says the Lord. You anoint my head with oil. That's one of the greatest things uh, that you can do in in Scripture is anoint someone's head with oil. It it means an extravagant anointing. It it doesn't just mean you get a touch. uh, When when Psalms 133 talks about the anointing of unity that flows down the head of Aaron, it flows over his beard and over his clothes. When you anoint someone's head with oil, you take the bottle and you dump it and you pour it so it covers their body. That's what it's saying here. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. In the presence of my enemies, you give me food. You give me life. You give me peace that passes all understanding. And you anoint me. You lavish me. You lavish me with oil. And my cup overflows. It runs over with abundance. How many of you want a little more abundance? Because when you find your MasterCard or Visa statement come in January, you're going to go, oh. Verse 6, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Why? Because God has prepared a table in the presence of your enemies. He has prepared a place for you to rest. He has prepared a place for you to get food. He has prepared everything you need in the presence of your enemies. And he's anointed you with oil. It runs over. He's lavished you with great favor, with great blessings, to where your cup is literally being filled by the oil running down over you. Your cup gets filled and overflows. And when your cup fills and overflows, it fills and overflows into others. Uh, and then we get to declare verse 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Why? Because I'm at a table in his presence where the enemies are not. But he has prepared a table for me. He has prepared a table for you. And he wants to fill our cups full. Look at Psalms chapter 45, verse 7. Psalms chapter 45, Verse 7, you love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. If you look back at the scripture of what we just read, your head, your anointed head with oil, your cup runs over. That, That anointing of that cup, that oil, is literally the oil of gladness. How do you find the oil of gladness? You sit in his presence in the middle of the attacks, the raging wars around you. You find his presence. And how do you find the depth of his presence? In the oil of gladness. That's why when somebody, you know, comes and counsels with me and they say, oh, I'm depressed, I'm beat up, this and that, and, and they want me to listen in a one-hour session to 59 minutes of all the problems, I stop them partway through. I say, hold it. Tell me one thing that's good in your life. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Because you're focused so much on the problem, but that's not where the oil of gladness lies. We need to release the problem because God is in control and step into the gladness of his presence and walk in the joy of the Lord because there is where you find strength. Because if we don't walk in the joy of the Lord, we won't have strength to overcome the problems and the issues, and we'll get consumed by it. I can't watch all the news anymore. I watch it for a while, and then I get depressed. One of our relatives is a, is a, a news announcer in, in, a, in a local station in Alberta or Saskatchewan, and she just resigned because she's a great Christian girl, And she just can't talk about all the depressed stories all the time. And she wants to bring a happy story, but it doesn't bring ratings. I tell you what, 
I'll stay with the ratings of my father because he sent his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And he sent his Holy Spirit to empower us. And there is a realm of heavenly hosts that support us, protect us, watch over us, whatever you might say. And I'll tell you what, there is constant joy in the heavenlies. Now the enemy, his heaven is constant doom and gloom. Constantly, has anyone ever been really saddened by an issue that's happened in your life? Obviously, every one of us. You know how hard it is. I understand. There's been times where I have fought week after week to try to fight this depressive attitude that wants to come on me because maybe someone falsely accused me on the internet or something and I'm like, they don't even know me. How could they say that about me? The one thing I stand for and preach is truth. I want the truth. And even if I screw up, then I want truth that I screwed up so I can repent and be restored. And you know, it would drive me nuts. And, and how many of you lost sleep over depression or over frustration or, or anger because you showed love, but they didn't show love back? I want to be very clear. Their issue is not your problem. Their issue is not your problem. It's not my problem. What someone thinks of me is not my problem. What someone thinks of, of what I do or what I say, it's not my problem. Unless they have enough relationship with me, like my leadership team and our apostolic covering, they have all the right in the world to come to me and say, your hair is a bit too long. <laughs> and I know I just destroyed 90% of your conversations with me after the service, but that's besides the point. You have no reason why I'm growing my hair, and I don't either. I forgot. But I'm just kidding. I'm actually not. I cut it a lot. The stuff's like a weed. Just grows and grows and grows. Oh. Again, Psalms 45, verse 7. You love, that's God loves, righteousness. And what does he hate? Wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, my God, has anointed you and me with the oil of gladness more than your companions. The year is not yet over. The year is not yet over. Just tell someone beside you, just say this, don't worry, God can still do it. The Israelites came out of Egypt healthy and wealthy. Exodus chapter 12, starting in verse 31. Exodus chapter 12, starting in verse 31. This is the night before the firstborn died. Verse 31, Then he, that's Pharaoh, called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, Let me explain what just happened. The angel of death or destruction has now come, and anyone who did not have the blood marked on the doorpost, their firstborn, and the firstborn of their cattle, their livestock, were all killed. But you see, the Israelites knew in advance what was happening. And they prepared themselves, but the Egyptians didn't. So then, finally, Pharaoh, after ten, the tenth plague has now happened and has touched him so personally, he lost his own son, then now Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron by night, the same night, and said, Rise, go out from among my people. In other words, get up. And rele I'm releasing you from the bondage of slavery. I'm releasing you from the captivity that I have had you in. Both you and the children of Israel. And go, serve the Lord as you have said. Verse 32. Also, take your flocks, take all your flocks and your herds as you have said. And be gone. And bless me also, please. Verse 33. And the Egyptians urged the people that they might send them out of the land in haste. For they said, we shall all be dead. Verse 34. And so the people took their dough, before not the money, the dough. They were making dough. 
but it didn't have time for the yeast to go in, so it was still unleavened. And, uh, and that was a prophetic word given. So they took their dough, they took their, their bread dough before it was leavened, having their kneading bowls bound in their clothes and their shoulders. So here they are packing the dough, the kneading bowls and all the stuff, Verse 35, now the children of Israel had done according to the word of Moses, and they had asked from the Egyptians articles of silver, articles of gold, and clothing. So now they're not just leaving slavery. Now they're not just leaving their captivity. They're literally going to the captors, uh, and they're saying, oh, and by the way, I want your silver, I want your gold, I want your jewelry. And take a look. Verse 36. And the Lord had given the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Can you understand what is happening? 430 years of bondage. 430 years of captivity. 430 years where they did not have gold, silver, and jewelry because Pharaoh took it all. And now... Because of the power of God, because of the will that God had for his people, he says, well, guess what? I will do great, mighty, and marvelous works for my people. I will shower them with my blessings and favor. I will give them the riches from their enemies. And here he says, and the Lord had given the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. It didn't just rob the Egyptians. The Egyptians wanted to give it to them. So that they granted them what they requested. Thus they plundered the Egyptians by the Egyptians' free will, basically. It's just the most crazy thing when you start to walk in the understanding and power of our Lord God. Psalms 105, verse 37. Psalms 105, verse 37. He also brought them out with silver and gold, speaking of the same event. And they were, and there was none feeble among his tribes. So now it's saying that there was none feeble. There were no sick. There were no poor. There, they had wealth. They had been delivered. Their sickness was gone. Their shoes didn't wear out. Their clothes didn't wear out. They didn't have to cook their breakfast. It just falls from heaven every day. Wow, that'd be nice. Waffles. <laughs> Butter flavored syrup, Aunt Jemima. Little bacon, sausage, couple eggs. They didn't get to place the order, it was the same thing. The Israelites may have been sick, broke down, and depressed while in Egypt. But when they crossed over from the borders of Egypt en route to the Promised Land, they left behind their sickness. They left their wickedness behind, weakness behind. They left bad memories behind. They left their poverty behind. The Bible said that they plundered the Egyptians. They took most of their silver. They took most of their gold. They took the finest of fine garments. They did not leave Egypt sick. They were not weak or depressed. Let me tell you that you can step over into the new year and leave pains and problems behind. I believe that we are stepping into a new season where we can leave our sickness in 2015 and step into complete healing in 2016. Amen? You can leave your poverty behind. You can leave your sickness behind. You can leave your sorrow behind. You can leave your sadness behind. God is ready to bring you out of whatever didn't work in 15 and bring you into the light of 2016. God is preparing us to literally step in such a level of faith, uh, hope, uh, peace, faith, and, joy, and love to be able to step into the great things of our Father, of what He has given to us. What he has, did I just have some piano? What he has given to us. That's what he's called us into. That's what we're stepping into this last Sunday of 2016. That's what New Year's is going to bring to us. If we're willing to believe and step into it. But if we don't believe it, we'll bring Egypt with you. And I'm not bringing Egypt with me. Because what happened to the Israelites, they brought Egypt with them into the desert. And eventually, all the things that God had given them and blessed them over the next season of years, they brought Egypt. They couldn't get Egypt out of themselves. But God is calling us not to live in an Egypt mentality, which is poverty, which is slavery. But we are to live in a sonship mentality. We are to live that Jesus Christ is our living Lord and Savior. And all that power that God used 
in those plagues to the, to the accusers, the oppressors. That's even before Moses went to the mount. It was the Abrahamic covenant, but it was before the Sinai covenant. It was before the, the writings on the tablets of the Ten Commandments. It was before Jesus Christ came to this earth. And so if this is what God wanted to do with the Egyptians to take them out of slavery, it was not God's choice for them to spend 40 years in the desert. What they chose was they got tired and, and started to build their own idols. And they started to, to say, well, we were better in Egypt uh, because their minds started to resort back to the slavery mentality. I believe, and in, 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 in scholars say that they could have made that journey in less than six months to the promised land if they had just walked it. Some say six weeks. Forty years, one whole generation did not see the promised land because the people could not let go of a slavery mentality. I'm here to say, if we bring in, bless you, if we bring in <laughs> one of the involuntary actions that you can't control, it's a sneeze. If we bring in this new year with our past issues of 15, you will bring slavery and bondage just like maybe you've lived in now. You will bring that into the new year. And I'm here to declare very, very clearly I refuse that in my life. I will not bring the bondages of 2015 with me into 2016. I choose today that this is a new season. This is a new day. And God has given me breath so I can celebrate and rejoice with the oil of gladness all over me. I'm just glad I'm still breathing. I didn't quite make my resolution last year. But I'm glad I'm still breathing. And I'm glad I'm still able to eat. I'm glad I still have a home, a house, vehicle. I'm glad I have a family serving the Lord. I'm glad I have a wife of 27 years till death do us part. I'm glad of many great things that God has done in this ministry. We bless County Line for this building and this land. We're glad with what people have done. Look at this side. If you didn't see the building before when we first got it, it looked very different inside. And we bless what the Lord is doing and providing. We are glad as a leadership team. I am glad with what Ivan and Erica Roman are doing in Empower Church in Medford. I am glad with what Nolan's doing in Revive Church in Calvin. I am glad what Chris and Anita Hicks is doing in, in High Prairie in I, Alberta. And I am glad at what Pastor Adonias and Carmen are doing in Mexico in Fuerza Agape and all the churches. I am glad at the what God is bringing into this ministry. I am glad and happy and I celebrate at what he's doing. I am so happy after a Sunday when I see people get touched by God because if people weren't being touched, uh, then what on earth are we doing? Because God has called us to seek his face, to seek his presence, to renew our mind, to give us strength. And that's what I believe we're stepping into for 2016. Let's all stand. I loved what, what God is doing. And what Becky said, the attitude, the, the area of God, I'm adding words to it but I understand Bethel culture. His presence is the same. He, he's not changing. The ones that are changing are us. He, he is glory. He is love. He is power. He is authority. And when something bad goes, goes wrong or happens, he doesn't change. He, he doesn't hate you. He doesn't dislike you. He loves you like no one else can love. What's changing is us in our environment. And the only way that environment can change is what you do in your choices. And if you and I choose 
When we choose Him, we choose His presence, we choose His glory, we choose His strength, His authority in us through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. When we step into that understanding more and more, then every day becomes a day of victory in a day of glorious future. And we start to see fulfilled destiny. How many of you know you have a destiny in front of you? Put your hand up. Because you are called with destiny. You are called with purpose. I am not going to let the devil defeat it. He can't do it in my life. I refuse it. How many of you refuse the devil to defeat you. Put your hand up. We need a show of hands on that one because I'm ready to say and declare to the devil, he's out of this house and not worthy in this place. He is not welcome in any way in our lives, in our families, in this house and ministries. God's going to do something great in this valley. I believe too. I brought a prophetic word to to Lou Engel and, and the team about a year and a half or two years ago, about a nine-month season and a birthing of revival starting in the L.A. Basin. And it was going to come up the I-5, come all the way up. And I believe where the Bethel students are going right now for the call and uh, um, April 9th, 2016, if any of you can make it, if you have a vacation time, you need to go. I was blessed to be skiing on Saturday and Pastor Michael Bullitt, we were skiing up there, met each other, or well, we knew each other for many years, but got onto the same lift and did some runs together and were able to talk and a bunch of their church is going to the call as well. And, and this, is a, this is a big thing, what God's doing and what God wants to do. That's from Transform Central Church here in Abbotsford. There's not any one church that's gonna have revival. It's gonna be the church the bride of Christ that's going to step into revival. And that's what we're believing and contending for. Amen. Huh. Just put your hand on each other if you can. If it's too big of a space, just get close to somebody. And let's just say, we declare revival. First in our life. And then our atmosphere. We declare revival in our families. Declare revival in our jobs. Revival in our house. So Father, it says in your word, where two or more are gathered in your name, you are there with us. And I know right now there's a, a flow of unity through this house. I can see it like electricity. And I see in the spirit this these barrels of oil, of gladness, of joy, anointing our heads. And I thank you, Father, that as we leave this house, we do not leave in sorrow, we leave in joy. And as we go to our cars and into our homes, we bring joy of your kingdom. We bring the happiness of your presence. And I thank you, Father, that you have declared great things of destiny over each one in this house. Everybody watching on Ustream, on Windward TV right now, you, you are to receive the declaration of destiny for 2016. And I thank you, Father, as we receive more and more of your presence right at this time. Right now, Lord, I choose to receive more of your joy. I choose to receive more of your happiness, Father, <laughs> because... Uh, you bring us great joy. And joy defeats sorrow. Freedom defeats slavery. Light defeats darkness. Pain-free lives. Sick, less lives. No sickness. Abundant wealth in the freedom. Abundant health in the freedom of the Lord. Abundant strength in the freedom of the Lord. 
And we pray, Father, these next three and a half days that we take every rich richness of 2015 and we celebrate with joy the things that we have received that you have given us in 2015. And anything that the enemy has tried to defeat, we reject his efforts. And we say, no, no way, devil. You have no power, you have no authority over me. And I am following the scripture where you, lying, deceiving devil, are under our feet because we stomp on your plans. But we raise our arms in the victory that Jesus Christ, our living Lord and Savior, has given to us. And we celebrate in his presence and his glory. And we say, we are conquerors, we are victorious, because the battles have already been won. And we live in the victory of the victory, in his presence and his glory. I thank you, Father, for giving each of us the opportunity to live the year of 2015. And I thank you, Father, for the opportunity of the destiny of 2016. And we choose today that you are the way, you are the light, you are our strength, you are our strong tower. In the time of need, you give us all things we need. You bring us favor. You bring us blessing, you bring us joy, you bring us happiness. And we thank you. We thank you, Father, for the finish of one year and the starting of the next. In your precious and holy name and all the people said, amen, amen. <laughs>